Hello, guys. Welcome back to Time Under Tension. This is episode four. In our previous episodes, we introduced the podcast, and then we had our own interview style podcast where we kind of went over our stories and what this means to us. So now we're going to start really digging into some topics here. We've talked about tension and the purpose of tension somewhat vaguely leading up to this point, how tension in life can be a positive thing. And so in this episode, we really just want to kind of break that down. What does it look like to experience tension and how do you differentiate whether or not it's a positive or negative experience? So we were watching the Olympic trials or something for mono bobsledding. I'm not really sure how we got to that point, but it was kind of an interesting sport to watch um, because in bobsledding, you have to use the pressure and feel the pressure when you're in a corner in order to manipulate the bobsled with your weight. So there's a lot about actually feeling that pressure and using it to propel yourself forward as opposed to succumbing to it or allowing it to overwhelm you. Do you want to touch on that a little bit? Yeah, I just, I think it's super fascinating to think about a lot of the things that come from sport or come from lifting or come from other areas of our lives. Um, like today I was actually learning about orientating, orientating. It's a thing on a map where you actually have to find your way around using a compass, but the point of it, um, actually can be translated to life quite, quite well. So when I was watching that, I just thought it was really interesting to think about using pressure to propel yourself forward, to gain speed, to understand when you need to slow down, things like that. Um, I just thought it was really cool to take sport, especially with my background and understand that pressure can also be a positive thing as well. Yeah. And I think what's cool about that sport is as I listen to the commentator kind of explain how the athlete would need to use the pressure it made me start thinking about how we can become comfortable in the pressure, even though it is an uncomfortable state, we can learn to recognize it and feel it and not allow it to overwhelm us, but to feel it as something that's going to provide momentum, but it's how we interpret it. Sometimes it's not necessarily that the situation causing pressure is good or bad. It's just what is our response to it going to be? Because when we start to feel it, that's like our internal barometer that we might need to change or might need to shift a bit to take advantage of this phase. Yeah, I think it's it's cool to think that they practice so much as well. I think it's it's important that we practice and put ourselves in opportunities to experience pressure. Um, but another thing with the bobsled that I think you touched on as well really nicely is that it isn't it's internal pressure. It's coming from within versus external pressure from without. It's kind of navigating your way around using the pressure your way, how best, how you've been practicing and applying it to the external situation that you're put in. Yeah. So, okay. I think we kind of have different experiences of what pressure feels like. What does that look like in your life when you feel pressure? How does that come across? Yeah, I think when I first started experiencing pressure, it always came from external pressure in a sporting event of some kind. Um, as my whole life being an athlete, all the pressure was sport performance pressure to perform. Um, and even though it felt motivating within to perform, it was still this pressure from the outside. And I didn't know necessarily until I experienced the internal pressure that was positive during COVID and quarantine that that pressure was really rooted in my need to make others proud of me or have my, that external pressure was creating love if I was successful. Um, and so really my experience with, with pressure, learning that internal pressure can be positive and that there's also negative pressure uh, when it comes from other people's opinions being the root of it, uh, really can can change if the outcome is going to be beneficial to your quality of life. 
and self-awareness or if it's going to just continue to contribute to your quality of life being left in the hands of others. I think that's great. And I think that unfortunately or fortunately, depending on how you want to look at it, sometimes we have to see like the fruit of the situation before we can understand whether or not that pressure is a positive or negative pressure. Um, If you find yourself in situations where you're feeling a lot of pressure and you shift course or adjust your behavior because of it, and then you notice that you're in that same situation again, I think that it's worth examining the pattern and kind of evaluating where where is that pressure coming from? And is it something that's actually meant to propel you forward? For me, I didn't really have like sporting pressure, but I definitely had a lot of pressure around school and a lot of external pressure for me came from comparison with other people. So if I wasn't at the top of my class or someone else was at the top of my class, I would feel the pressure of wanting to compete in that way and wanting to be better because I felt like I wasn't good enough if I wasn't the best. And yet there was never any attainment, like of any achievement where I would ever feel self-satisfied. So I started to realize that that pressure, although also, although I ex- uh, saw it as external, really came from an internal mm. dissatisfaction with self. Mm. So I think that we have an idea of what external versus internal pressure is. But I honestly think that most of the times if we break down external pressure, if it's something that we're actually feeling pressured by, it also goes back into something internal that we need to face. Yeah, I think that's great. I think that the differentiation between external pressure being rooted in internal insecurity versus true external pressure being applied to you and yourself is is great. I think it is helpful to then differentiate in yourself, whether it's positive or negative um, pressure in regards to what the transformation or the change or the newness is going to produce in your quality of life or in your, in your own self. Yeah. So do you think that there is actual external pressure? Hmm. I think that there can be applied external pressure, but how you are perceiving the pressure is what creates the tension that is positive or negative is what I feel. I think you can have external pressures being applied like timelines or deadlines or um, pressure to have a winning season as a coach those kinds of pressures are external and not necessarily in your control or internal pressures being put outward, but um, your perception of, of that pressure is coming from your own personal, um, I guess, internal compass or where you're at in your self-awareness journey. Yeah. And I totally agree. And I, I think that there's definitely a healthy level of external pressure. Like I think the deadline example is a great one. You know, we have some kind of standard at our job, most of us do, and we need to meet that or we need to meet some kind of deadline or amount of output. And that's a healthy amount of external pressure or in within a healthy relationship, I think that there's some pressure because there's some expectation there. So I think that surrounding ourselves with people who, do care about our best interests, which doesn't always mean that they make life easy, but that they challenge us to grow. That puts us in situations more so where we're experiencing uh, pressure that we can grow from as opposed to pressure that will derail us. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that next time um, in terms of where we establish our our self-worth so that when you feel this pressure and you go through things like this, say you miss a deadline or or you fall short of a goal you've set, um, it doesn't completely uproot who you are. Right. I think I can share a personal example um, of the difference between the, just the difference in general of where, again, we're going to talk about the roots next, next episode, but the difference I feel about surrounding yourself with people who are, are applying that positive pressure to transform 
I've experienced a ton in, in relationships period. Um, I feel like relationships is really where, um, God transformed me and transformed my heart, but I was able to understand that in relationships, the pressure to perform was still there. Um, before COVID I was in a place where the pressure I was feeling was caused by my own insecurities um, and the people I surrounded myself with, it was not fair to them. It wasn't that they were good or bad people applying pressure or not. It was the fact that I was insecure in myself and wasn't grounded in anything um, that when any kind of applied pressure of another person threatening the relationship or I was just insecure in a situation, that pressure led to me being angry or, um, you know, cheating, things like that. I was definitely not taking the pressure internally and using that to grow and transform. I was using it to then go apply this other pressure back at the pressure that was just ended up being this clash in my whole body. Um, and so then once I went through that transformation with God over quarantine, where I realized that this was an internal positive change that was being applied to me through self-awareness, through self-love, through actually finding who I am and remembering who I am and being able to love who I am on the inside and not have any external circumstances or parts of me on the outside that are dictating my worth. Um, so then when we got together, I was then surrounded by somebody who challenged me a lot, um, in a positive way that allowed me to understand a, a, my response versus my reactions. And so the pressure I was feeling on the outside challenged, challenged me in a way you challenged me in a way that would allow me to really think about why I was doing the things I was doing. And so that applied pressure from somebody that you've built a relationship with, a friendship with, where you feel trust and compassion. It helped me to then take that external pressure, put the pressure on me, really understand, like, look at myself. This is a reflection tool and I can then grow and change and progress forward in coming the best version, most authentic version of myself. That's so great. And I think that part of it is the way that you're interpreting the situation. I think one thing that's cool about the bobsledding, going back to that, like you said, they have to practice, like they have learned that the pressure is what propels them forward. And I think that the sooner that we accept that, the sooner that we can start to experience pressure in a more positive way. We can see it when we get, uh, when we maybe butt heads within our relationship, we can see that as pressure that if we use it correctly, will propel our relationship forward. But when we start to run into pressure and see it as like an unfair experience, or we feel that uh, we're not prepared to handle it, then I think that we start to self-sabotage before we really understand the value of the experience. Yeah, I just think it, it's absolutely pressure can, can be what you decide it is, your perception of it. Is there any examples that you want to share about your experiences with pressure internal or external? Yeah, I mean, I kind of mentioned school being one for me. I had a lot of I felt a lot of pressure through my life to perform really well in school. And because I was homeschooled, um, I kind of was moving at my own pace. So I just thought, well, faster and faster, like I just need to get as much done as possible. And I felt some external pressure when I got to college and I was a little bit ahead and felt like I needed to just keep that momentum. And there were points when I realized that really after the fact, that the pressure was, I was applying to myself, but it wasn't really in alignment with what I truly wanted. Like I thought, okay, well, I just need to study all day long because that's the best thing that I can do because, you know, I hear that the top students do this, which again is comparison. Um, and then it didn't lead to any improved quality of life. And I'm really not sure that it actually helped my grades, you know, and I think that I kind of, I, I kind of experienced an identity crash after college because I 
had just grasped onto this one area in which I felt a lot of pressure and didn't balance the different areas or values in my life in a way that allowed me to continue to grow. And instead of using pressure, I was like, okay, I have this grade goal that I want to achieve. Um, Once I did achieve it, I just felt the pressure to maintain it or be better or study more, but I wasn't actually growing because my experience of that was just increased anxiety. Like looking at the fruits of that experience, I realized that it, it really derailed who I was in a lot of ways and I didn't use it appropriately instead of kind of using it as a learning experience to figure out, okay, this amount of time spent studying is beneficial. Um, then I can spend this amount of time to embrace the pressure in this other area of life. I just thought, well, I have to just be the best student ever. So I just disregarded my friendships and disregarded all relationships. And it's like another way to identify whether pressure is negative or positive is if it's taking over your whole life. And if it takes the place or takes precedence over areas that you also believe to be valuable in your life. Yeah, I think a a great point from that was you talking about how much time you spent there. And when we talk about pressure, that tension, it's time under tension is is our podcast because the time is important. But there is that part of pressure in that that internal pressure and the realization within of your perception of it where you have to understand that there are times to break, there are times to stop, there are times where you can keep propelling yourself forward and growing and all of these things, but there's only a certain amount of time that you can really withstand that pressure and understanding that it's important to prioritize the time to pause or stop or take a break and rest. It's important. These bobsled athletes are not constantly in a bobsled. They start off in that sprint. You have to take some time to let your muscles recover, to let your mind recover, to let your heart and soul recover that. I just think it's important to also speak to the amount of growth that you put yourself under in that time that you're under that tension is, is absolutely beneficial if we're prioritizing our self-love and, and growing into a greater person or the person we want to be, but we can't always be pushing forward. Otherwise we're going to be exhausted. Like you're talking about, I just think it's really important. It's really important to prioritize Yes, time under tension is important, but you can't just hold your dumbbells in a shoulder press like this forever. Otherwise, you're absolutely going to hurt yourself. And I just think that that point that you just made is is perfect for speaking to the time under tension. It's important, but also making sure that you're resting in between. Yes, I think the first time I really started to think about that, I was listening to a podcast and they were talking about like different like movement disorders in which patients have like um, spasticity in their muscles where their muscles are over firing and their muscles are so tight because they're always on, they're always contracting and they're so weak because they're so tight that it doesn't really matter that they're say flexing all the time. They're not able to use their bodies well because their muscles are spastic and it it really speaks to like more isn't always better. And you're right. Like if you want to take advantage of the pressure, you have to know that there's going to be that airstream after it. Like the pressure is used as a launching pad so that you can then flow out of it. But if you're constantly seeking pressure or putting pressure on yourself unnecessarily because you're afraid of that flow state, you're going to lose the whole point of experience pressure anyways. And you're eventually just going to kind of run yourself into the ground. Yeah, absolutely. That's so great. So how do you use pressure in your life now? Do you create pressure internally or how do you experience that? I think what made me also think about the resting point was my current journey with pressure Um, definitely I've been struggling, as you know, um, with gaining weight, I fell to a pretty low weight that was starting to affect my health just in general and knew that I needed to make a change. And I, I knew this internal pressure and the external pressure applied from somebody who cares about me was important to 
perceive in a way that was going to help me grow and not um, wear me down. So really to speak to pressure right now is I'm having to surrender a lot of things that I felt were I was prioritizing over my own health. So cardio, for example, is something that I just could not, would not let go of, couldn't not do it. Um, otherwise I was in kind of this mental negative spiral around food all day. So, um, the pressure initially was, okay, you need to slow down. You need to stop working out and you need to add some food to your diet. This is going to start balancing it out. We'll start gaining weight appropriately using, um, you know, you as a, as a tool, just because of your expertise. Um, but knowing initially that I was fighting that and I chose to stop lifting and stick to cardio and that in itself was me fighting that pressure, um, and trying to almost manipulate the pressure, which kept me stagnant. Um, and so once there wasn't much progress there, I knew internally, I was feeling even more pressure, especially from God telling me to, give up cardio to surrender it completely to understand that if I'm going to grow and move forward and be able to perform his will, whatever my purpose is in life, be able to be the light that I know I can be to others. I have to be able to love myself for who I am and not what my body looks like. Um, and that's just been, it's been a really hard journey and the pressure of instant gratification and the pressure of external circumstances or external pressure of from my own view of other people's perception of me and love equaling what I look like has been a, a real challenge. But um, right now I'm in this place where I've given up cardio uh, and I've put on weight and I'm in a much better place and I can feel the tension still. There's a lot of tension of me fighting the thoughts of I'm not going to be loved unless, you know, I look a certain way or just me not being really rooted in belonging to myself yet. And so that's really the pressure still being applied to get there, but I'm realizing that I have to rest in between. So right now, you know, I got, I was really growing and then I needed to calm down because all of a sudden I was starting to emotionally kind of panic. Um, and so when that started happening, I, you know, took a couple steps back and just allowed myself to just focus on this one thing and not do so much self-development work just to balance it out, make sure that I'm prioritizing my, um, mental health as well. Uh, but knowing that I have grown so much, like it's, it's a win as well. I've now I'm focusing on how do I feel on the inside and I can see these thoughts that, and see really where I'm placing my validation and where that pressure is coming from and start to transform it to be a positive growing experience. Yeah. For myself, I feel pressure in the form of anxiety and shoulds. And I think sometimes like, okay, if you're listening to this and you're trying to think about what areas in your life you feel pressure, I would challenge you to look at the things that you're saying should about like what things in your life do you think you should be doing that you're not? And then going to those things and saying, e breaking each one down, like, is this a should because I was told that this is what I need to do. If you're having issues with say body image, um, do you feel like you should be at a certain weight? Okay. Why was that? Because someone that you knew kind of spoke about that weight being like a cutoff point, like what it go back to where that pressure came from to identify whether or not it's going to serve you. And if it's an area that's stressing you out and leading maybe even to something as tangible as negative health outcomes, you know, that the fruit of that is not good. So you need to get to the root of it to understand where that pressure is truly coming from and decide if that pressure is still something that you need to apply to your life to keep you moving forward. When I feel anxiety, I often want to interpret it as bad, but what I'm learning is anxiety is just a, a yellow flag. It's a signal that something in my life needs to be addressed. And so I can, it either means that I need to take immediate action on something that I've been ignoring or that 
there is a should in my life that contradicts with my ideal life. And so an example of this is I feel a lot of anxiety around finances and kind of micromanaging them. And I feel a lot of pressure because of comparison to other people as to what I should, what I'm making and what I feel like I should be making and what other people my age are making. And, you know, they're, they have their, all their accounts set up perfectly and um, a steady multiple streams of income. And I start to compare things like that. And then I find that I'm just more and more anxious about money. And so I know that that's not uh, a healthy form of pressure that I'm applying to myself, but the anxiety is also a form of pressure that may not necessarily be negative. I just need to apply it in a different way. So whereas I was applying pressure through comparison with other people, I can apply pressure by setting a tangible goal for my finances and then structuring my income and my cash flow to meet that goal so that I'm actually positively working towards it, using that pressure to propel me instead of using this pressure to crush me. Yeah, that's so good. I think that's just about when do I lean and when do I lean this way and starting to get a feel like a bobsledder. It's like, at what point in time do I need to shift my energy this way? And is my perception in, a, in the right place? Am I using this to be a helpful tool? Just like you're saying with finances. Okay, great. I'm going to stay over here. But am I using this in a comparison way? Okay, well, I need to start shifting it over here. Otherwise, I'm going to fly off the rails. I think yeah. that's so good. Exactly. Um, one of my favorite books I've read this past year was The Alchemist. And one of the, my favorite lines was, and when you want something, all the universe conspires in helping you achieve it. And I love that because I really think that if you start to shift your mindset to everything around you in life is, is really trying to help you achieve what you want to help you achieve your, your values, your goals, um, you can start to look at pressures in a different way. And maybe you need to shift the way that you look at them. Maybe you need to get to the root of them and kind of reestablish them in a healthy way. But if you look at everything in your life, the people in your life, the experiences as helping to shape you and to who you want to be, I think you can kind of take the tools that you already have around you and use them to help propel your growth instead of looking at obstacles and challenges as things that are going to derail you from your process. So good. Yeah. And then from my perspective, you know, I think God works good through all things. That's what he said. And I truly believe that. I think that if we look at every experience as an opportunity to grow, as an opportunity to learn something and then to come out stronger and be even better, we can start to feel the pressure in those corners to keep propelling us forward. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I also share that value. And I think that there's always good in a situation to find it's where, where is God in this? And something that I've taken away from just my experiences period with good, how I handled pressure, good and bad. It's always allowed me to then further connect with other people because other people have experienced similar pressures and it's nice to feel like you're not alone in that or, all right, I applied some good pressure here and I grew a lot and this is cool. And I can share this opportunity with someone else who may need some, some compassion in the situation as well. Yeah, that's great. And I think that speaks to the importance of when you go through an experience um, and you're kind of coming out the other side of that corner, taking time to stop and reflect. What did you learn? You know, what was challenging? What could you maybe do better next time? You know, what can you apply to your life moving forward? And taking those time to reflect also to be grateful for what you experienced, because I think that sometimes we sell ourselves short and don't realize how much we've grown in those periods of time. We just breathe out this sigh of relief that we don't feel that pressure anymore. We made it through that experience, but we don't take time to celebrate what we actually learned. Um, and then I heard a quote this week I really liked, and I'm going to kind of wrap it up with that. Um, every negative emotion we have is self-created by the degree of resistance we have to our reality. And again, I just think that speaks to the fact that if we're suffering or struggling under pressure, a lot of times that's because we're resisting it instead of trying to learn from it. 
And I just want to empower you to challenge yourself this week to look at the areas in which you're feeling pressured, get to the root of why you feel the pressure and decide whether or not it serves you. Yeah. Challenge accepted. All right. So that wraps it up for this episode. Next week, we will be talking about our roots and kind of getting to the core of who we are and how to establish that in a more solidified foundation so you can withstand the pressure. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and we will catch you next week.